Okay, so I know the title and thumbnail is very obvious here. We're talking about buying a PS3 that can play PS2 games. Done. But there's a little bit more to it. There is some context that some people don't seem to realize, which is today you can own two PlayStations that cover five generations of consoles. And that is staggering considering that, well, it's not just a little bit of compatibility here. Some games don't work there. It's not that. It's pretty much everything or nearly everything and that's something that we'll talk about so what kind of compatibility can you expect which consoles should you be looking at to buy why this is such an ideal setup moving forward and more importantly that you can do this long term there are some reliability concerns with those early models but actually a few years ago this was figured out as well so we'll be talking about that also it may seem very simple to say in practice, but you're really not going to beat this particular setup in most cases here, uh, whether it's the console space for sure, or even the PC space. So that's something that we can quickly cover here. Um, you might not even be watching this if you're considering playing on PC, but of course um, your options would be PCSX2 and your games can look better than ever uh, through PCSX2. But even if you're using say our PCS3, not every single game is going to work there. Um, also the system requirements are going to be a little bit higher, so it's highly dependent on the rig that you have but um, between that or the console space you're really not going to beat a compromise quite like two consoles that can go back five generations and that's whether you buy a ps5 today or tomorrow or well <laughs> well whenever you reasonably can have one or maybe you have one right now that way you can offload that ps4 because there's only seven games there that don't work but you know this is what we're talking about when it comes to convenience and ease of use you know people are stubborn but more so we want peace of mind that is the one thing that has dominated the conversation surrounding playstation 5 building up to its release right so that's the one opportunity we had here on this channel um, for a lot of the topics and videos that we covered we saw so many people asking about this uh, and even outside my channel right whether it was reddit reset era ign comment threads people wanted ps3 support they wanted one and two support whether it was the argument of you know one and two is easy to emulate why aren't they doing that what about three they've got source code so yeah sells a pain but maybe they could make it work look at microsoft's program and i will always be the first to give microsoft accolades for what they've accomplished on their uh, backwards compatibility program but i will also be the first to remind people that they monetize their program meaning that not every single game is supported every single title is uh, recertified qa to put back up on the store for sale if you don't have the original disc and also by the time you get to the original xbox it's like 39 games it's not really accurate to say it goes back four generations right we're not saying that about ps4 when it plays 50 ps2 classics from the store granted sony won't let you use the discs but you get my point so this is a great compromise to where it's the peace of mind you've been looking for right get a playstation 5 get a backwards compatible ps3 and you've got pretty much everything pretty much for the most part so let's actually talk about your compatibility options and what um you know what won't play because playstation 5 native play you can expect that ps5 games when they come out it's going to play on your ps5 ps5 plays the vast majority of ps4 software uh there are seven games currently that straight up do not work i'm displaying them to you right now do you want them do you have them do you care about them more than likely it's no uh, so those don't matter to you. There are also 100 games in the PS4 library that are bootable and they will play. However, they may exhibit odd behaviors. What that means is that they could exhibit graphical artifacting. Some games do in fact have these issues, uh, like missing textures or shadows, but most games don't seem to exhibit any weird errors. I'm sure there's, um, you know, a database getting built that will actually tell us specifically what's wrong with, with each one of these games. 100 isn't going to be too difficult to comb over, but for the most part, a PS5, you can reliably get rid of your PlayStation 4. Now, that backwards compatible PlayStation 3, what does that cover? Well, if you get the 60 gigabyte or 20 gigabyte models, uh, which here in North America, that was CCHA and CCHB, that 20 gig model is the one with the black trim. Very not common, right? It's a very uncommon machine. They got rid of that one fairly quickly. Um, doesn't have Wi-Fi, by the way, if you're looking at that machine, so keep that in mind. Um, those machines have hardware-based support for PlayStation 2 software. Meaning, it's got the Emotion Engine and Graphic Synthesizer built right in. So it's practically native play for the most part. There are definitely a handful of titles like the PS4 compatibility that we just talked about where they will exhibit weird behaviors. And some titles, I believe, uh, there may be a very small list out there. I'll have to double check where the games won't work at all. But it's similar performance there. It's pretty much close to native play and you're gonna have very reliable support. For PS1 games, 
every PlayStation 3 model can do these. They're emulated 100% and also very good performance there. Um, same situation. You are going to run into some titles that run a little weird. Frame rate might not be super great. Certain menus might be missing. When we compare it to other situations, again, like Microsoft, where straight up there are a lot of games that are not available to you or Nintendo platforms where they were always very good at going one platform back for you know native backwards compatibility um but you know obviously they don't do that with switch nowadays and even back then they were only going back as far as one platform so you would need a handful of nintendo machines to reliably cover a bunch of them and same with microsoft you'd need a, a few xbox consoles to reliably cover all of that so with these two playstations you're pretty much good to go now you also could look at the 80 gigabyte uh, ntsc model or the 60 gigabyte pal version and unfortunately if you're looking at if you are in the PAL territory. Uh, this is something to really keep in mind because unfortunately the PS2 support, whether it's through um, mixed emulation or full hardware support, that is region locked. So if you import, say, a console from the US, uh, you would have to start buying US PS2 software. So you are unfortunately stuck with uh, the PAL console with what I would assume you have a library of uh, PAL PS2 games. But if you are looking at those two machines, those have a mix of emulation and hardware support. So the Emotion Engine is removed. It's just the graphic synthesizer. And this is where you do lose some compatibility here. And this is more in line with what you can expect in the PlayStation 4 experience. And that... Um, you know, there's about a hundred or so titles. Again, I don't know how many specifically, but there are a fair amount of games that will have some of these issues pop up. And it could, again, look like graphical artifacting. You could have um, sound missing in certain sections. FMV, FMVs might have a, a problem displaying. Um, it's not a bunch of games. It's still pretty good, reliable support. But something to just be mindful of is that you may run into a title that won't work. But again, it's that compromise. And, uh, well, the other thing, too, is that uh, what was really cool about when Sony launched PlayStation 3, they even had, um, if you are in a, in a situation where you currently use your PlayStation 2 actively, because that is the machine that you, um, you know, you have to keep it plugged in, right? Because there's no other modern alternative if, if you're into native console play. Uh, Sony released this little thing, which is a memory card adapter, and not many people have this or even know that this exists, but this was specifically made for backwards compatible PlayStation 3s was really kind of a single use device because once you used it you didn't need it anymore but this will accept ps2 or ps1 memory cards and you can manually copy over over your save data and then continue your games on playstation 3 super cool and actually you could also copy them back onto this and then use that memory card into an actual ps2 or ps1 console so technically we were looking at cross save support back in 2006 which is pretty interesting but uh these little guys unfortunately are like kind of rare now so they're like 80 90 dollars it's not it's, it's not ideal to go pick one of these up um that's another thing about this video we have to be honest here it's not going to be cheap to get into this if you do want to spring for this little guy but also just that backwards compatible playstation 3 in general because the values for these machines have held pretty well and that's mostly because of what we discovered in 2019 which is that well, for the longest time with PlayStation 3 models, those early models, it was the yellow light of death. And granted, PS3 certainly had a more reliable hardware versus, say, Red Ring of Death back then. That's really a moot point. The problem with PlayStation 3 is that eventually it would go. And for the longest, longest time, people didn't know exactly what it was. Um, the early... Um, the early problem solving was reflowing the board, which was basically just heating the crap out of that motherboard. Uh, whether you just take a heat gun to it all over the place or you throw it into an oven just to uh, reflow all that solder, that was not the actual solution. Even though it temporarily worked, the consoles would still fail. Then, you know, the the narrative kind of spun to uh, the BGA grid underneath uh, the cell and the, um, the RSX. Oh, you need to get rid of that lead-free solder. And so people were reballing their systems for you know 100 150 dollars and even then that might not work because that yellow light of death was really caused by the nec token capacitors so 
Um, this was again discovered fairly recently, so most people still haven't really caught on to this just yet. But uh, once you replace even one of those little NEC token capacitors with uh, some modern tantalum capacitors, the problem will be solved. I mean, the real issue here is that these capacitors, they're responsible for storing energy. A lot of current goes through them. And so if even one of these things goes bad, which the bare minimum of capacitors are placed in there, the PS3 is not going to know what to do. It can't turn on properly. And there's your yellow light of death. These capacitors in particular have a very high failure rate, not just inside PS3, but in the other electronics that they're found in. If you replace one or even two of them, depends how many of them have already gone bad on a particular model, by the time you replace them, and you can even re you can even retroactively replace them so much to the point where um, you can get rid of all of them and replace them with new tantalum capacitors, so you can kind of future-proof PlayStation 3s now by attaching enough of these things on here, the PS3 will boot up as if nothing happened. As in, you can more reliably walk into these things and... Um, no, there isn't the worry that it will eventually go. If you have this service done to your console in particular, you will look pretty good for a long time. Now, it's also important that I mention this, but playing PS2 games on a PS3 is a very good, solid experience, especially considering that for PS2 hardware nowadays, natively, you have to either hang on to an old CRT display, which a lot of enthusiasts like doing, but you can either do that or buy a good HDMI conversion kit, and not a cheap one on eBay, a good one. But the thing is, your PS3 is that good conversion kit. In fact, uh, it'll have a display resolution of 720p, so it'll work across all these televisions, and depending on your display, the games will look bright and beautiful, but also, they still look like PS2 games. They're just sharper, they're in the 4x3 aspect ratio, and this is where PS3 has some settings to adjust them. So, you can change it to a 16x9, Looks a little strange for most PS2 titles. I wouldn't do this unless they actually support uh, widescreen settings, which a handful of games, if I recall, do have that. But also, um, there's the smoothing filter, and this will actually clean up a lot of those harsh edges of PS2 games. Now, some people prefer this, um, but if you don't, you know, this, this setting, you can turn it on and off at a, at a whim, more or less. You can do it for PS1 software, and it really has some dramatic results where it really cleans up the image of almost all PS2 games across the board. It does wonders. And the other thing I guess you really have to think about here is that PS2 is what... That's the odd man out in this situation, right? Because really... If you don't want to go through the hassle of buying these old PlayStation 3 models and then trying to fix them or repair them and maintain maintain them like I've just tried to tell you here, you can still buy any other model and you've still got support for PS1 software. And then you can pick and choose uh, amongst all the remasters and ports that we've seen throughout the years. So PlayStation 3 was home to some native uh, PS2 collections. And then uh, PlayStation 4 has a handful of PS2 ports as well. So you do have... There's some reliability there, there's some options. And uh, what's really cool about, say, the PS2 Classic section on the PlayStation 3 is that those can be downloaded and played across all PS3 models. And a uh, little fun fact, I always love this about those games, but they actually have the manuals built in. So you can uh, hold the PlayStation button and check out uh, high quality prints of the manuals. I always thought that was so interesting. Um, those do not retroactively appear for discs. They're only on the, uh, the PS, PSN downloads. Also important to note that if you like use this, for example, or use the internal memory card system, uh, those save files do not mix with any of the emulation classics that are available on PSN, whether it's a PS1 or PS2 classic, so keep that in mind as well. But if you are okay with letting go of PS2 games, you know, that is also a situation where two consoles, uh, four platforms, not too bad as well. So take this conversation as your reminder that while Sony has had a shaky history with backwards compatibility, they do offer two products that, uh, when combined, offer the widest range of compatibility against any other console manufacturer or even uh, a PS5 and a PC setup today, which also is arguably very good and depending on you know, the kind of software that you're okay with not being able to play through our PCS3, um, the PS1 and PS2 games look better than ever, and even the PS3 stuff too as well. So um, that is also a very good combo, but if you're into the console space, but you don't want to have all these machines plugged in, don't want that CRT taking up space or whatever, right? This is, I think, a very good, um, a very good setup that can't be matched. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.